Uh, it looks like I got a couple of doctors here. Hi guys, how you doing? We're on we're on Facebook Live. Um, so we want to have a quick word with you, do you? Yeah, no, no, that's great. So are you are you uh, are you real doctors? Or are you just uh, you've got the <laughs> just pretend one? No, we're real doctors. Yeah, I'm a consultant psychiatrist yeah. from Norfolk. Norfolk, okay. Yeah. Okay. What's yeah. your name? I'm um, Hayley. Hayley, okay. Yeah. And what, why are you here today? Um, so a few years ago, there was a big report in like the probably the world's most prestigious medical journal, yeah. um, which basically said that the human health impacts of climate change are potentially catastrophic, and that was the only time that I've seen the word catastrophic in a medical journal. So I started finding out more about it, and one of the things that made me really angry was the fact that um, I hadn't known. How could I not have known that? And the more you read, the more you realise that actually what's happening already, you know, tens to hundreds of millions of people are already dying, getting displaced from their homes, suffering loads, you know, ill health, physical health, mental health problems, um, and the projections for the future are just disastrous. Within the lifetime of my children, there's potential for the whole of global society to break down. Um, mass famine, um, heat to the extent that many parts of the world will become uninhabitable. Um, and that's, you know, that's in the lifetime of my children and many other people's children. You know, I'm very aware when I watch the news, you look at like Cyclone Day and what's happened in the Bahamas. I don't love my children more than those women who are watching their children washed away in floods, dying of starvation. Um, we've got to act now because just like the human body, the, the Earth system has feedback loops and already we're seeing those feedback loops starting to be activated. We've lost three quarters of the Arctic ice by volume already. We're seeing our forests burn all over the world, up in the Arctic regions, rainforests all across the world. Even in the UK, we've had big wildfires. You know, we saw the big fires in Portugal, in Greece, up in Sweden, in the Arctic Circle. When we burn the forests, we release a load of carbon back into the atmosphere, but also we, we lose the ability of the forest to, to pull down the carbon that we're putting up. So we're also seeing much more release of methane from the permafrost as it's melting in the Arctic regions. And if that continues, then the, the global warming is going to spiral out of control. There's no way we can pull it back then. So when people talk about us leaving our children a problem to solve, we're not. We're leaving them a death sentence. And we've got to get that in our heads. So we need to act now. We need to act in the next few years. The government's saying 2050 for a net zero target is utterly unacceptable. That is kicking the can down the road. And you look at what they're doing at the moment. They've just green-lighted another coal mine. They're the biggest subsidizers of fossil fuels in the UK, in, 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 in Europe, and in the G7. They've, they're pretty much taxing solar now. They've blocked onshore wind. They're pushing fracking. They're expanding Heathrow. They've written into law a duty to maximize um, extraction of UK petroleum. So that's what our government's doing now. When they say they hear us and they hear how urgent it is, they absolutely don't. So that's why, despite years of petitions and lobbying and marches, we finally decided that the only way to get people to listen is to stand in the way to be disruptive. I don't want to be breaking the law. I've been arrested twice. I'm still under investigation by the GMC. But there's just, you know, when I look in my children's faces, I just feel like, if we don't stand up for this now, then, then, then what are we? There's that quote about, um, for the triumph of evil, all that's necessary is for good men and women to do nothing. I think, you know, that's got to speak to everybody now. We've all got to make those tough decisions. None of us have perfect lifestyles. I don't have a perfect lifestyle. In the, in the, the infrastructure that we work in, in the society we work in at the moment, it's really hard to do that. But we've got to change that. The thing is, people talk all the time about people being selfish and greedy and we fight each other all the time and that, that being basic human nature. But what we forget is that the greatest achievements of humanity, our global society, things like the NHS, are based on our enormous capacity for compassion, for cooperation, for ingenuity. And we've got to draw on all those things now. We've all got to step up, we've all got to work together to build the vision of a sustainable future that we can have. We know how to do it, we've got the technology, we've just got to have the will. So I ask everybody to join us. Tomorrow we've got a march starting at 12.30, out, um, starting at the London Eye. So please come along and join us for that, show your support. Absolutely. Well, that's very powerful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
Anything you'd like to add? What's, what's your name? So my name's Sarah. I'm yes. an infectious diseases registrar in Newcastle. Wow, um, you travelled out from Newcastle. So yeah, so I take in a week of annual leave. Um, yeah. I guess I'm here for the same reasons that I'm a doctor. I'm interested in human health and well-being and um, everything that I do at work is, is going to be pointless if we continue on the journey that we're going on in terms of carbon emissions, in terms of climate change. Um, and I think we can't really separate climate change from some of the other environmental changes that we're seeing. So migration, we're expecting to see 200 million migrants by 2050. Um, so, if, so 200 million climate refugees are climate refugees, refugees, yeah. Um, 2050. 200 million by 2050 climate refugees. Um, and they all and, have to go somewhere. Yeah, um, and that will contribute to other problems like so I work in infectious diseases. Um, I'm really aware of the challenges that uh, migration brings in terms yeah. of infectious diseases, people having to live in difficult circumstances with inadequate water and sanitation. Yeah. Um, and you know, we need to, like the health service is showing that we can address this problem. The health service, my trust, has declared a climate emergency and committed to reduce to being carbon neutral by 2040. So I'm really proud of the trust that I work in. Good and setting. if healthcare right. can do it, then why can't other businesses, why can't the government? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, where, where's your Where's your trust? So Newcastle Hospitals. Newcastle. Yeah. Shout out to Newcastle Hospital for taking this serious. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question. So you're talking about like, uh, you know, obviously there's going, there's going to be a, a rise of infectious diseases. Uh, I, I know after the, the hurricanes in the, in the Caribbean that you know what it was only the, the destruction and annihilation of like 70 percent of all, all the homes that they had. Yeah. Afterwards, it was when the real problem started. It was uh, it was the infection of uh, of, of water. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It was, it was of, uh, yeah. I don't exactly know which diseases were, but they're ones that are normally, you know. Yeah, so we've seen it after, for example, after the Asian tsunamis, we saw uh, a rise in diarrheal diseases and skin infections with bugs like Staph aureus, which is a bacteria. Yeah. Um, and then we also, there was a, a syndrome that's called, that's, um, called post-tsunami um, uh, post lump. Yeah. And it was actually where people who had been affected by water, so had taken in uh, water, uh, that was infected have had pneumonia after the tsunami. Um, but basically, uh, it's the displacement as well as these kinds of disasters that are yeah. causing people to get various bacterial and viral infections. And obviously, when you also compound that with malnutrition, which we're going to see more because of climate change and because of changes to land use, then uh, you end up with an even worse situation with people who are even more vulnerable to infection and are going to be worse affected. Um, when they do acquire infections. Wow, so it's a yeah. double whammy and then they got like mass migration and oh, it's pretty, yeah. it's, it's pretty dire. It's dire, it, it but I dire. think this is really exciting and this is really showing that, you know, you can get massive change in a short time if we all commit to it. You know, yeah. there's thousands of people here and it's just really exciting. You know, I'm busy like flyering, talking yeah. to people about this is the fact that this is a medical emergency, yeah. like giving the flyers and so many people are just saying, you know, thanks for what you're doing. Like, yeah. we're really pleased to, to see you out. Like, uh, I think that, you know, we can change things if we if we all kind of commit to. Mm. And just, just one, one point there that uh, your colleague said about uh, she was shocked that there was no uh, information. Like, why hadn't she heard about this? Mm. You know, and uh, we've, we've got a uh, uh, simultaneously there's an action going on against the BBC to tell the truth. Yeah. You know, and um, you know there's, there's a lack of awareness, general awareness, and people think, well, if it was such a crisis, why 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 aren't we hearing about it all the time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so a big part of this action is to try and bring that awareness, and then hopefully we will get some of the better media coverage. It's really unfortunate that our media is not. Uh, kind of stepping up to the role it should be playing of informing people. Yeah. Um, what we're doing in, in medicine is we're trying to educate medical students and student health professionals. Yeah. Um, and we're really pleased that the General Medical Council has said that all medical students who graduate um, from 10 to 20 onwards need to learn about sustainable healthcare. They need to learn about environmental determinants of health, yeah. which is something new and shows a change. It shows that, you know, hopefully the medical workforce will be better informed and better able to inform their patients and. Uh, you know, will help to kind of move things in the right direction as well. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Well, well, thanks a lot for coming out today and coming there, driving the whole way down here to, uh, you know, giving up your time to be on the streets here and putting yourself on the front line, you know. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, okay? okay? Thanks, Okay, okay bye-bye.